Dave Liu with guns.com and today we're looking at the new SIG Cross PRS. SIG definitely has its pulse on the competition world. Uh, they have seen that the world of long range precision tactical matches has blown up over the last 10 years. So this is their entry into that realm. This is different than the normal SIG Cross. This is the SIG Cross Precision Rifle System or PRS and it's designed for PRS and PRS style matches. This rifle falls into the production division of the PRS uh, competitions. It's priced at $2,500 MSRP, and that's the cutoff for production level rifles in the PRS. So the original cross was designed as a, a, the ultimate backcountry lightweight hunting rifle. It, was, it had all the features of the modern rifle, so it's been updated, but it, they kept it super lightweight and really compact with a folding stock. The original cross weighs in at 6.8 pounds. Now for this new cross PRS rifle, they've beefed up pretty much everything and made it ideal for the precision rifle world. First, they extended the barrel, made it 24 inches so that you get increased velocity and made it a really heavy profile so that uh, even in long strings of fire, you'll still get good accurate shots. They also beefed up the, the stock. They made it heavier so it balances the rifle better and they added to the buttstock a rear bag rider. And finally, they extended the forend and added an Arca Swiss rail to the bottom of it. All of this, one, makes the rifle heavier. Now, heavier is good in the precision rifle world. Heavier means it's more stable and you can absorb recoil better. So this is a nice, heavy rifle, perfect for PRS shooters. So this rifle, the Sig Cross PRS, weighs in at 14.2 pounds. Now, with their Sig Scope and my uh, bipod on there, it comes out to about 18 plus pounds, which for me is like the perfect weight for a, a competition rifle. With this uh, Area 419 muzzle brake, I had no problems uh, containing the recoil and si seeing my shots at long range uh, and, and making uh, corrections. So now the most important part of any rifle is its barrel. This one comes with a 24 inch stainless steel 5R cut heavy contoured barrel, and it performed outstanding. From the factory, they offer it in 308 and 6.5 Creedmoor. This one in particular is a 6.5 Creedmoor. So now accuracy. Now, I was pleasantly surprised with the accuracy because this is a factory produced, mass produced barrel. So I wasn't expecting a lot, but I was super impressed with the accuracy on this gun. With the SIG ammo, which is the one it liked the best, I was able to get at 300 yards, a 1.3 inch group. That's about 0.4 MOA. That is fantastic. That is more than you could possibly ask for and enough to win any match if, of course, the shooter does its job, in which case I didn't, but it wasn't the rifle, it was me. And another great thing about the barrel is it's user changeable. Uh, I didn't actually try it, and, um, but I've heard that it's supposed to be very simple. Um, the des it's designed after like, like an AR-15 with a barrel extension, so there's no need for a, a barrel vise, there's no need for uh, 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 gauges for it. Um, you should be able to just, just like an AR-15, take off the forend, unscrew the barrel nuts, uh, take out the barrel extension, and swap in your barrel. Actually, my only complaint about the barrel was the, um, the threaded muzzle end. Uh, the threads are a little bit long. Um, for my uh, muzzle brake, I had to put a spacer on it for it to time properly. It's a little bit strange, but other than that, no problems with the barrel whatsoever. All right, next is the action. Now this action is an integrated chassis receiver action. What that means is the chassis and the receiver are all one piece. So the whole action is one piece. You don't really take it out. You don't put the receiver into the chassis and you need to bed it or anything. It's all one piece. So what that means is one, it's a simpler design and it's also lighter weight. Now the bolt is a three lug 60 degree throw bolt. Um, and it was actually surprisingly light. The, the bolt throw was surprisingly light. Usually 60 degree three lug bolts can be a little bit heavy, but I had no problems with this bolt, uh, bolt throw whatsoever. Uh, the bolt also comes with uh, a floating interchangeable bolt heads. So you should be able to change out the bolt heads easily for change your calibers. That with the simple uh, barrel change should make caliber changes on this rifle and barrel changes very easy. Now my favorite new design piece on the specific cross PRS rifle is their safety. Uh, the safety, they actually made it into a, a thumb rest. Clearly they did some research on PRS shooters. PRS shooters a lot of times like to float their thumb on the right side of the rifle if they're right-handed shooters. And the safety is shaped 
to cradle the thumb. I thought this was a, a genius move. It's really simple, but you know, it worked fantastic, uh, especially for me. So rounding out the receiver, uh, it has a 20 MOA uh, scope rail, uh, AR style grip. So you can change the grip to any AR-15 style grip and a paddle ambidextrous magazine release. So now magazine capacity can sometimes be the Achilles heel of uh, precision bolt action rifles. Um, for me, the supplied Magpul AICS magazine worked flawlessly. I also found the American Rifle Company magazines worked really, really well. Uh, I did try Ruger magazines, uh, MDT magazines, and um, uh, Accurate magazines, and I had a little bit of trouble with those in, both in feeding and fitment, but uh, the other ones worked great. Okay, next is trigger. Now this comes with a match grade uh, two-stage trigger. It's adjustable from two and a half pounds to four and a half pounds, according to the manufacturer. I actually got it down to about two pounds. It's a great trigger, nice, uh, nice pull and nice light break. I did find that it had a lot of over travel, which I thought was a little bit strange. For me, no problems whatsoever, and I'm pretty sure any you know, decent shooter can take this rifle out to pass a thousand yards with no problem. However, PR shooters are slightly trigger snobs, so they'll probably poo-poo a little bit on this trigger, but it's perfectly adequate and it's a nice, nice, great break. Now, SIG also redesigned the buttstock on this cross PRS rifle. Uh, they added a bunch of weight to it, one to balance out the longer, heavier barrel. Uh, this actually worked out really well. I found it from the factory balanced great, right in front of the magazine well, which is really what you like. The reason why that is, is because on barricades and obstacles, if it balances on that spot, it's much easier to control recoil. So in addition to the extra weight, they also added a steel bag rider. Uh, this allows you to be able to put a support bag on the rear and have a nice long space for uh, being able to adjust that bag and manipulate it so you can control your, your elevation and get really solid prone shots. So of course this uh, buttstock has all the standard adjustments, uh, cheek height, uh, length of pull, and even the butt pad can be adjusted up and down. But what I like was it was all toolless. So you didn't have to go, you could do pretty much all of them on the fly if you wanted to extend your length of pull, possibly for setting it up for a different shooter, or in certain positions you want to change the height of your butt pad. Easy to do, one push of button button. The best one was the, the, the cheek riser uh, adjustment. The cheek riser is actually spring loaded so that you can move your head up and down and the cheek riser will follow it. And whenever you get it to the right position, you just lock it down. Uh, the last element of the buttstock is the folding option. Now this is great. It makes the rifle a lot smaller by unlocking it and folding it up. It allows for much easier transport. It also allows you to get the buttstock out of the way when you're doing maintenance. To remove the bolt, you just turn the, uh, the buttstock out of the way and remove the bolt. Now, I really like it because it folds to the right. This allows you to, when you're transporting it, it captures the bolt so the bolt doesn't slide around or fly around when you're moving it. However, because it flips around to the right side, the mechanism is on the right side. And some shooters that I had try this rifle found that the way they manipulate the bolt the hinge mechanism got in its way. For me, I personally had no problem with it. The way I manipulate the bolt, I was able to run the bolt really, really fast and it didn't, I didn't even notice the hinge mechanism. But if you have this, a style of bolt manipulation where you kind of uh, cant it or you know, use it, uh, the, 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 uh, the buttstock as a lever, then it might get in your way. Now, the final new feature on this rifle is the forend. They extended it. They extended all the, the M-lock rails on it as well, and they added an Arca Swiss rail to the entire length of the bottom of it. Now, I think this is fantastic. Arca Swiss is basically the standard now for precision rifle rifles now. Um, the way things connect to the bottom, either bipods, tripods, plates, and bags, most of them use the Arca Swiss standard. And for them to add this to this rifle makes it really, really, uh, really, really versatile. So along with this rifle, SIG also sent me their Tango 6 scope. The Tango 6 is a 5 to 30 power scope with a 34 millimeter tube. The elevation turrets have 12 mils of elevation within one revolution, and in total it has about almost 24 mils of total elevation within the scope. In addition, it has zero stops, uh, locking turrets, and a very good feel on its clicks. Now this scope is also designed to fit into the PRS production division. So its MSRP is slightly less than $2,500. And for a scope of this 
level and at this price point, um, I think it's fantastic. The glass is on par with pretty much all the higher end scopes that are in this price range and the feature set is excellent. If I was to nitpick, I would say that maybe the eye box is a little bit small. I really didn't notice it when I shot it in competition, but you know, it, it was a little bit small when you're comparing it to some of the other scopes in this price range. And the adjustments, the zero stop adjustments, you have to use hex keys, like, and you have to adjust all three hex keys multiple times. I don't really like that. It, that's kind of personally to me, uh, it's, I have a hard time seeing it and manipulating those small hex keys. So I prefer other systems, but this one worked perfectly fine and the scope tracked accurately. So I was able to shoot it at matches and take long distance shots with no problem. Now, the one really innovative feature on this is there, they have a digital anti-cant system. So inside, you can turn on a system where if your scope is slightly canted, there'll be indicators on either side of the reticle. So when you're looking through the scope, next to the reticle, there'll be little lights. If one side lights up, you know that you're tilted that way. I actually found it really intuitive and it worked really well right off the bat. I really didn't need to you know, figure it out or learn it and it didn't take me long to adjust to it. So the final part of the system is the SIG ammo. As I alluded to earlier, it shot fantastic out of this rifle. Um, I really loved it. The 300 yard group was actually smaller than my 100 yard group, which kind of leads me to believe that it's my technique at 100 yards, which made the, the dispersion. And at 300 yards, because it was such a small group, that really shows that this ammo performs. So from what I understand, SIG makes this ammo in-house, uh, including, I believe, most of the components. Um, I haven't tried reloading the brass, but from the accuracy it produced, the great SDs and ESs that it produced on my chronograph, uh, it seems like this is a high quality round and definitely has match performance. So in conclusion, I'm ultra impressed with this entire package, not only just the rifle, but also the scope and the ammunition system. It's all made to go together and it went together great. So it really is kind of a turnkey system. If you are wanting to get into the precision rifle game, you don't want to spend five, seven, ten thousand dollars on a custom rig, but you really want to get in with something that's competitive and will allow you to grow into the sport. I think the SIG system is fantastic and, you know, they hit it out of the ballpark on this one. Well, I hope this helped. I hope you liked this review. Um, remember to check out guns.com for rifles like this. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. That really helps us. And tell us, are you into long-range precision rifle shooting? Uh, put it in the comments. Take care.